Hey, this is Darren from Property Prosperity. I thought I'd have a bit of a chat about a story I was telling someone the other day, and I thought you might find it interesting as well. It was actually a client of mine, or it became a client of mine in actual fact. It was actually referred to me from a, a person I helped subdivide their property, and they were pretty excited about the results. And then they were talking to their friend at a barbecue, I think it was, and they were just really down and depressed about their property. And, you know, they had this investment property and then spent all this money and it was just getting them really down, essentially. So their friend said, hey, give Darren a call. Hey, thanks for the like. They said, give Darren a call, have a chat to him, see what he can do to maybe help you out. So he gave me a call. I was actually driving driving on my way to an appointment. So I had, it was back to like an hour drive. So we had plenty of time to have a chat. And so he was having a chat and he was explaining about this property and it sounded like the house from hell. It sounded like a haunted house, to be honest. He was just describing all the effort and the pain and the trauma he'd been through trying to, you know, dealing with tenants and dealing with things breaking and renovations and he ended up doing the bathroom and the kitchen and he had issues with the backyard and the front yard and it was just one thing after another after another and this is over the course of years and years and years until the point of the, yeah, he didn't even like talk to me, uh, talking about his property anymore. He didn't even, didn't like to go and visit it, didn't like to talk to his tenants anymore. It just got him down every time he even thought about it. So, you know, and I actually, at the time, hey, Josh, thanks for joining. At the time, I was, you know, we were chatting on the phone and I was thinking, oh man, that sounds really bad. You know, I'm, I'm heading down, I'm actually driving past your property in the way and down to where I'm going. So what I can do, I can drop in and just, um, yeah, check it out and see, maybe if I can give you some advice and, you know, look at your options and see what we can do for you. So I, you know, I pulled outside the house and, I thought, man, it does look terrible. It's got like, he had overgrown grass and it had like rubbish lying around everywhere and the gutters were falling down and it looked like a, you know, it looked like a derelict house and looked like a haunted house, to be honest. So you wouldn't want to walk past it at night type thing. And I'm like, man, this, is, this looks terrible. I know why he's having all these issues and stuff. And then I got out of my car and then I went to go up the driveway and I looked in the letterbox and I'm like, that's not the right number. Like, that's, this is up the wrong end of the street. And so, then I looked at the number again just to double check and then I headed, got back in my car and it was actually up the other end of the street and I walked back and I drove back down the other end of the street and I pulled outside this house and this house was like awesome. It was probably like the best house in the street and there was nothing wrong with it. It looked really nice. So I'm like, man, that's this is definitely not the house he was describing. So I checked the number again. I even gave him a call. I'm like, are you sure this is the same house we're talking about? He's like, yeah, 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 that's the house. And so then, you know, then it started to dawn on me. It wasn't yeah, after all these years of, of hassle he'd been dealing with this house, he just sort of got this perception that, that, you know, this was like a haunted house and it was like the worst house in the world. But, you know, from a fresh set of eyes, from my perspective, there's nothing wrong with it. You know, it was the best house in the street. It was quite a nice little area. You know, I couldn't see any any issues really. So thanks for the like. And so then I'd start having a chat to him about, you know, you know, what's the situation? You know, what why is this you know, you've gotten to the end now. The crazy thing was he had gotten to the end. He'd done all the renovations, he dealt with all the bad tenants, he you know, he was moving on now. He could start afresh and just the thing is, because of all these years of dealing with all these issues, that just the bad taste that left him in his mouth about this property, again, it just even if he found another tenant and even if he didn't have any issues from then on, it would just feel like it was just getting him down because of all the things he dealt with in the past. So you know, we had a bit of a chat about it and we said, you know, what's their options? We can, you know, find another tenant and we could sell it. We could, it's pretty much the other two major, op you know, made choices. And at the end of the day, he found another tenant. He's always going to be a bit down about it. And, you know, he'd, he'd, he'd spent a whole lot of money renovating the house, probably probably more than he ha he should have. You know, he'd, he'd done everything to a quite a high standard that he probably didn't need to, to be honest, for a rental property. Um, but it came, ended up coming look, looking amazing. He basically got to the very end when it was just about to be finalized. And, you know, he's kicked his tenant out to do the last bit of renovation he needed it done. And then, so now he's deciding, does he rent it out or does he sell it? Selling it would mean he's going to take a bit of a hit. You know, he wouldn't be selling it for, he wouldn't be making money on it. Probably wouldn't be losing much money on it, but he would definitely wouldn't be making money on it after all these years and all this hassle. But then I had a chat to him and said, hey, what's what's most important? You know, your your sanity, I suppose, or your just emotional well-being and yeah, would you rather just be able to sleep at night and be have less stress and just be able to forget about it and move on? Just take it as a learning experience, and then you can start again. You know, start again with a fresh set of, you know, enthusiasm, and then you don't have that stress and all the, you know, the hangover that you're dealing with of this old house. That, and then the other question is, you know, what is the house going to do? What's the market doing around there? So, remember the reason why you're investing, particularly if you're going to just buy and hold. If there's not that potential for for capital gains as far as you know, developing the property or renovating or building or whatever. So then you're saying, okay, what's going to happen over time? So we sat down, have a look at where his market, the market was at in that particular suburb. 
Yeah, we could sort of see it hadn't really done that much over the last few years. It was a, it was a little bit outside of the city. Um, you know, it probably the chances are, you know, it was quite close to some developments where there was, you know, hundreds of blocks of land about to come onto the market. So that's a lot of supply and potentially not too much demand. Um, well, probably the same amount of demand without with with this, with a heap more supply. So the danger then is, you know, if that demand can't soak up all the supply, then what's going to happen invariably is the market's either going to do nothing or it might it might cool off a little bit and actually come down a bit. So so bearing that in mind, you know, we know properties go up you know in value over time. You know, if you held on to it for another five or ten years, it probably would go up in over time. But you know, just the fact of the the stress and the hassle of dealing with it and just the fact it was just getting him down on his day-to-day life you know we sat down and talked about it like what's what's the point you know at the end of the day if you can't sleep at night and you're always you're stressed about this property at the end of the day it's just a, it's an investment property who cares you know he was relatively young he was wasn't even 30 yet he had plenty of chance to start again so just get rid of it move on start again so take it as a take it as a learning experience you know lose a few bucks but who cares really you know at the end of the day it's your you know, what allows you to sleep at night, what's going to be less stressful for you. So, and that's what we did. We whacked it on the market. We ended up selling it for more than what he was hoping for, probably about another 30 grand more than we t- what we were, were expecting to get for it. So it did cover some of his costs. And, um, but really, I'm, I kept, caught up with him about six months later. We caught up for a coffee and having a chat and he was like a totally different person. It was ridiculous. He was so relaxed and he just had this glow about him when last time I met him was like, there's this gloom about him, basically, and it all came down to this property. Since that time, he, you know, he got a new job and he met a new partner, and his whole life had just turned around. And it's, it's sort of like it's weird. It's sort of like from that point when he sold that property, things just turned around, and from then on, everything was all upside from there. So, so that's I thought I'd share with you. Um, I know I talk to people occasionally where they've had properties and they just feel compelled just to hang on to them just for the sake of it. So, and then sometimes that really gets them down. They're like, you know, this property is just really getting me down, you know, and I just, I know property is going to go up over time. You know, historically properties go up over time, but, you know, it's just getting me down all the time and who knows when the market's going to go up. So, so yeah, that's probably my advice to you. If you, if you are getting a bit stressed about your property and it's getting you down, you're a bit depressed, then have a think about, look at the long term versus the short term. Yeah, if there's potential, there's going to be some short term upside, then yeah, definitely hang off for the short term. If it's going to be long term, there's five to ten years and you're just dealing with this property that you don't really want to have for the next five to ten years, then just just cut your losses, just move on, just start again. You know, you've always got plenty of time to start again and learn from your learn from your mistakes. And the cool thing is next time you won't make those mistakes again. You'll probably make different mistakes, but that's alright, because the more you do it, the better you're gonna get at it. So hopefully that's made sense to you. Hopefully you understand now why you can potentially make a loss but still make a gain, because at the end of the day you've got you've got the option, you've got the benefit of learning. And then the benefit of starting again and, you know, next time you're going to do it all better. So thanks for joining me. Thanks for your likes. And if you have liked what I had to say, and click on the like button. If you haven't liked it, still click on the like button anyway. And if you know someone that's dealing with a bit of a property issue and they're a bit stressed about it, then send this, share it through to them and hopefully they'll get some benefit out of, um, you know, having a different perspective on owning investment properties, I suppose. And if you've got any questions or or you've had a situ- similar situation, then click a comment in the comment box. Or if you've got something you want me to talk about, click a comment on there and happy to talk about it next time. So thanks for joining. I look forward to talking to you again next time. Thanks.